do we want to talk about the surprise or the chalk? Oh, we're going to talk about start with the winner. Okay, start with the winner. So Grant Fisher interviewed him post race. I asked him, "Did your 10K result when he got out kicked by Joe Klecker influence your strategy in this 5K?" He said, "Absolutely." He was oh, like, okay. "Yes." I learned that I cannot turn this into a 400 meter race. I need to make this an honest race, which is why Evan Jager uh -huh. was assigned to take the lead if the pace slowed down. Yeah. Evan Jager already on the steeple team. He was using that to help Grant Fisher make it an honest race. Woody Kincaid in his interview knew that they were setting up the race for Grant Fisher. And Woody Kincaid knew that oh, interesting. this was going to be a race that helps Grant and hurts his chances of winning. So he kind of had to accept that, like, this is going to be a disadvantage for him to win, but he's still going to have, you know, the ability but, to make a team. Okay, but let me ask you this, because I always wondered why did he, did that gap form, and then he kicks in 54. Maybe did that play into a strategy of, hey, if they're going out at Grant's pace, people are going to fall off, and I can be there to capitalize in the last 400? Is that yeah, what he said? Yeah, he didn't say that specifically, but he was definitely thinking that. I asked him if he had any regrets. He said maybe, you know, he, you know, he was willing to admit that, like, you know, there could have been a chance that, like, he lets the gap go too far. Yeah. But he trusted that he can close. And he said it was actually helpful having two guys ahead of him to, like, chase after. And that might have been a reason why he kind of had an extra second on that final 400. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was just interesting dynamic that they knew – Woody knew that the, the race was going to favor Grant. But he also knew that – not everyone can do what Grant does. Right, exactly. So I mean, therefore, yeah, he can yeah, take advantage yeah, of that yeah, and right. find a way to make the team. And well, they go one, two. But meanwhile, Hillary Bohr out there rabbiting for his brother, Emmanuel yeah. Bohr. So it was like almost a Spider-Man meme with the two rabbits who come in there. <laughs> like, hey, wait, okay, now all of a sudden yeah. we got two of you. And in a way, they almost worked in tandem. Yeah. Bohr did the first st stuff, and then the Bowerman guys moved to the front. But Kincaid's kick was otherworldly 54 or something like that and emmanuel bore feel for him yeah just missed the 10,000 team and then you know got got caught here and then in the you know final stretches and falls back to fifth but for a while there it looked like he was going to make it it was going to be fisher abdi Ahmed nur and, and emmanuel bore and just didn't quite have enough i think he ran like 63 64 something like that for the last last lap while bore was closing in 54. um nur though gets a third spot and he doesn't win NCAAs, <laughs> gets, the, gets on the U.S. team. Yeah, hell of a season for Abdi Hamid Nur. Um, wins NCAA indoors, double. Was dealing with uh, food poisoning a few days out from NCAAs. He didn't mm. want to disrespect, though, you know, the loss that he had. He said, those are straight runners. He says, like, they beat me on that day. Yeah. Um, but him being able to end his season with getting top three in a good 5K field, yeah. that – is like speaks more volumes than anything he's done up until this point. Yeah. And it definitely shows that he's going to be someone to watch, not someone to watch. He's going to be someone to be a factor in many 5k trials to come. I think he's going to be really good in the 10k trials. Like if Abdi Hamaner could do this, Abdi Hamaner could have made the 10k team at free. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if he's able to get third here, he yeah, definitely. Could have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, hell of a season for him. We did ask him, you going pro? Or are you coming back for one last run in the cross country season? He he says I don't know yet. I gotta enjoy this. But he said he is thinking about it. Mm -hmm. He says he does love running for his team. But I do think the contract that he's gonna be offered is gonna be too hard for him to refuse. As much as he loves NCAA cross country, you love you know financial stability a bit better. Um, but his status went from you know he was. His like contract status after indoors was probably like extremely valuable, mm -hmm. and then NCA 10K loss, his contract value went down. But now you're tracking it. Yeah. His contract value probably went even more than what it was initially yeah. after his 5K top three. So yeah. he did a good job of making sure his value is at, is at the best it can be before he signs on the dotted line.